I'm Hannah, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can start building on the Lightning Network and use Polar to help. So if you're not already familiar with Bitcoin's Lightning Network, well, it's a second layer built on top of the Bitcoin network. It's a way to exchange Bitcoin transactions, real Bitcoin transactions, with others on the network trustlessly and nearly instantly. If this is new to you, you'll want to check out the conceptual overview found at docs.lightning.engineering slash conceptual dash overview. There you'll find the information you'll need to understand what's happening on the Lightning Network and to start using it. So what is Polar? What exactly does Polar do? Well, it uses Bitcoin's reg test and some Docker containers to create an entirely local Lightning Network. It's a lightning network that you have complete control over. You can spin up a variety of nodes on the network, decide how they are connected to one another, and then send transactions through this local network. And as we'll demonstrate here, you can use this local network to test out how you can connect an application to the lightning network and then send transactions and see what happens when your application uses lightning. So let's start by installing Polar and creating a local network. Then we'll send a few transactions and then demonstrate using Polar to test integrating Lightning into an application. To download Polar and get all kinds of information on what it does and how it works, head over to lightningpolar.com. Polar is available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Once Polar is up and running, the first thing you want to do is create a network. Let's click the Create Network button either right here in the middle or on the top to the right. We'll want to give our network a name, and then we can decide what kind of nodes will be on our network. Polar can create LND, C Lightning, and Declare Lightning nodes. Keep in mind that you'll need at least one Bitcoin Core node running on the network. To start with, we'll keep it real simple and create just two LND nodes and one Bitcoin Core node. And let's press start. When first setting up a network, it will take a minute for Polar to download and create the necessary Docker containers. Let's check out our nodes. You can click on a node and the box on the right will give you all its information. On the info tab, you can see the node type, the lightning implementation being used, the version, the status, the balance, alias, pub key, block height, and channels. On the Connect tab, you can find all the details you'll need to connect to this node. At the top, you can see info on where to find this node, the gRPC host IP address and port, etc. And at the bottom, you can find the paths for the TLS cert and macaroon files. You can also get this info in hex and base64, and of course, the LND connect URL. On the Actions tab, you can do a variety of things quickly, such as deposit funds, open a channel, and make a payment. If you want to perform other actions with your node, you can open the Polar Terminal from here to get even more control over your node. So now that we have the lay of the land, let's try doing some things. First, let's have Alice deposit some funds. Once she has funds in her Lightning wallet, she'll be able to open a channel and send transactions. Let's click on Alice's node and move over to the Actions tab and look at where it says Deposit. We can keep the default value of a million Satoshis and then click Deposit. If we head back over to the Info tab, we can see that Alice's balance has gone up to one million Satoshis and that the block height has also increased. Now that Alice has some funds, she can open a channel with Bob. To do that, let's go back to the Actions tab and select Open an Outgoing Channel. We'll need to select Bob as the destination, and we'll keep the 250,000 Satoshi default, and then click Open Channel. You can also create channels via drag and drop by clicking on the node and dragging a line to the node you want to open a channel with. Notice that Polar is now showing us a green line between Alice and Bob's nodes. If you hover on either side of this line, you can see which node is the source and which is the destination. This line represents our new channel, and we can click on it to see the channel's details. Here we can see the source and destination balances, status, capacity, and more. And now, finally, we are ready to make some Lightning Network payments. 
Bob is going to create an invoice for Alice to pay. Note that clicking on a node will display its info, but right-clicking will give you a set of options. So let's right-click and select Create Invoice. Let's leave the default amount of 50,000 Satoshis and create the invoice. Copy and close. Let's head over to Alice's node so that she can pay this invoice. Right-click again and select Pay Invoice. Paste the invoice data in and pay it. Now we can click on the Alice Bob channel again and see that the source and destination balances have changed. Now that we know how to use Polar, let's see how to use it to test a Lightning integration. Now let's imagine that you have built a very cool web application that lets users post content and allows other users to upvote that content. Now, you may have used an application like this before, but this one's going to be much cooler because we're going to integrate this application with the Lightning Network and in the process enable some cool new features. If you'd like to follow along with this example and try implementing a Lightning application or LAP yourself, you can find all of the code and documentation for the example that we're about to show you at docs.lightning.engineering slash build-a-lap. Let's have a look at what our application does prior to Lightning integration. We've got a website with not much content, but a few users show up and start adding some content. Alice shows up and starts posting new content. Bob can quickly see this content when viewing the website, and he can upvote the content that he enjoys. But we've all seen this functionality before, so how can we use Lightning to add features that other sites of this type don't have. Well, what if we could add some features that let users cryptographically validate that the post has not been altered and directly and instantly pay content creators when they upvote that content? Well, how would that work? Well, what if we could have each user connect their Lightning node to the application? We could use the node's public keys as an identifier have the node sign the content of a new post to allow other users to validate those cryptographic signatures. And while our application can do some of the coordination, we can use the Lightning Network to send value between users without ever having to manage those funds ourselves. Well, step one would be to allow users to connect their nodes to the application. Polar will allow you to import a pre-built network. And lucky us, the repo for our example app includes a network file. So let's open Polar, click on Import Network, and select our file. Now we can see that we have nodes for Alice, Bob, and Carol. So let's go ahead and start this network and wait for the Docker images to be downloaded. Once we're up and running, we can head back over to our application and have our users connect their nodes. Now when Alice visits the site, she can select Connect to LND and connect her LND node. We can see that our application requires some data, the LND host, or where to find the node, the TLS certs that the app and the node can communicate securely, and the macaron, which of course is a fancy cookie that will allow the application to request certain data and actions from Alice's node. Let's go view Alice's node in Polar and find this data. We can click on Alice's node and select the connect tab. Here we'll find the host info and the TLS cert in hex format. To generate the macaroon that we'll need, we'll need to use the lncli bake macaroon command, which we can do via the terminal. Right click on Alice's node and open the terminal. Here we can paste in the command. The macaroon that we need to generate will allow us to read information and invoices, allow us to write invoices, and read and write messages. LND's macaroons allow us to have fine tuned interactions with users' nodes. So let's paste that command into the terminal and hit enter. Grab that macaroon and give it to our application. Note that our application can now read info from Alice's node, such as her balance. Now when Alice creates a post, her username is pulled in from her node alias, and the content of the post is signed by her node. As before, this content is now viewable by other users. So let's have another node, Carol's, connect to the app as well, and we can see how these two nodes can interact with the help of our application. Now that Carol is connected, she can verify Alice's content by checking the signature. We can pass along Alice's post content and the signature, and using LND's verify message endpoint, 
Carol can be assured that the post content has not been altered. Now, Carol would like to upvote Alice's content, paying her a small amount in the process. When Carol clicks upvote, our app uses the macaroon that Alice gave us to generate an invoice for Carol's node to pay. To complete this payment, we need to give that invoice to Carol's node. Once it has been paid, the upvote is recorded, Alice receives funds, and just for fun, our app drops some confetti for Alice. So we've taken a web application with features that we've all seen before and upgraded it with cool new Lightning Network features using Polar to help us in that process. Don't forget that you can download Polar at lightningpolar.com and you can follow along with everything that we've shown you here at docs.lightning.engineering slash build dash a dash lab. The tutorial found there goes into detail about how the app itself is built and how the Lightning integration works. Check it out if you're interested in building a lap of your own.